I'm Bob Kovacs. I uh, talked last week and showed you all about our home photovoltaic solar panels that Mary Ellen and, and I installed on our home and uh, what, what it cost us, what we've earned back. I'm going to actually start today with a couple of remnants from last week's presentation just to tidy up a couple of things and then we're going to dive in. The rest of today, my presentation, is going to be this odd mishmash of stuff. So bear with me and if you recall, next week I'm going to come back again to talk about green cars. Today I'm going to wrap up, or I'm going to, yeah, wrap up from last week. And this is the first thing that I have to talk about today. Now, when I did last week, one of the things I forgot to show you was the new electric meter that the electric company installed on our house. So they took out the old meter. The old meter was one that had that disc in it that would spin around. And they put in this one with a digital readout. So in March of this year, we began March with a reading of 7701. Can you see the reading here? 7333 is what it says. We started March with 7701. We ended March with a reading of 8106. So we used about approximately 300 kilowatt hours in March. Then from the end of March, this meter started counting backwards because we started generating more power than we used. So since March, we've not paid an electric bill. We only pay the monthly connection fee, like $6.25 or something like that. So we haven't actually paid for any electric usage. And the difference between this, 7333, and 8106, we've paid them for 8106. They've got our money for 8106. So the difference between these two numbers goes into our bank with the electric company, and we can draw power out from our bank until we reach 8106 and then we start paying them again. Anyway, that's the uh, remnants from last week. If you want to save money, if you want to cut your energy, the place to start, the inexpensive and easy place to start is conservation. Conserve the energy you already have. So here we have uh, weather stripping for your doors and windows, caulk, so you can caulk those leaky gaps around your door frames and stuff like that, and of course, insulation. The problem is we hear this so often that we've kind of filled our brains with it and now we're completely full about hearing about this and it just flies over our head. It is still the best, most inexpensive way to save money on your electric bills. This Now this is something that I have. This is a water heater timer and it's uh, maybe about the size of a lunch pail. And we have an electric water heater. Again, this is at our house in the mountains where we have the solar panels. Here in Annandale, our house has gas, natural gas, so we heat the water with gas. But uh, we are our electric water heater, we've got this box and it has a timer. So we set the timer so that the water heater comes on at like uh, six in the morning, so that when we're up for showers at seven, we have hot water and then it goes off at 10. So water heater is on up until the point we've done our dishes and so forth. And then it goes off and then we turn it on around 6 p.m. and it stays on at 6 p.m. until, I don't know, 10 p.m. or something like that. And uh, that saves us money so our water heater isn't cycling on and off when there's nobody using it. So something else we did, we've got a big deck at the other house. It's high, it's like uh, this ceiling height above the ground level. So I can park a car underneath it. So that's what I always do, I park a car underneath the deck. And we have a solar panel on top and there's a wire that feeds down to this light. It's got a sensor on it. So I bring the car underneath, we get out of the car at the middle of the night, you know, we pull in at 10 at night, boom, that light comes on, shines right on the door so we can see. I used to have to leave the car on, put it in reverse so the backup lights came on and Mary Ellen would come out and she'd find the door lock, and, but this shines right on the door. It's an LED light, it's got batteries, it's charged with the solar panel. And so far we've had it operating for, I don't know, six months, eight months, worked perfectly. Here we have a solar powered, this is its solar panel here. This is an emergency radio. It also has a crank, so you can crank it and the crank will charge the battery. So you can uh, listen to, uh, it's got the weather, the, the, uh, you know, the weather warning station. You get that, plus it's a regular AM, FM, and it has shortwave in it too. So if you wanna listen to you know, Radio Libya or something, you've got this. And uh, it has a, oops, I just turned it on. It has a flashlight and you can charge a cell phone from it. 
And uh, of course, say this is a mishmash central, this presentation. Uh, of course, you can save on electricity if you're still using incandescent light bulbs. Why? Okay, now these are for the hardcore, wanna save money and live our lives very comfortably people. So if you're willing to deal with firewood, this is an outdoor wood boiler. The manufacturer is classic. That's why it says classic here. That's the manufacturer. So this is an outdoor water boiler. It takes the place of a boiler that you might have in your basement and it heats water, which you then pump to baseboard water, uh, you know, baseboard heaters, um, baseboard water heaters. And so that's how he heats his house is by burning wood. And he's got a big stack of wood back there. There's also, now this heats, this is a boiler. There's also furnace versions that make hot air. So if you use forced hot air, there's versions that do that as well, heated with wood. Come join us. Uh, this same guy, we're talking hardcore. This same guy has got this big photovoltaic solar panel array. Uh, it's about eight and a half kilowatts. That's a lot of juice. Yes? That's why I was asking about the reduction in size. I don't think all those solar panels would let attract the room. Yeah, well, some people don't, some people do. I think they're gorgeous. <laughs> I, you know, to me, that's uh, can, can you that's the uh, you know Playboy Playmate of the Month of uh, of vistas right there with solar panels right in the middle of it. The same guy, so he's got the wood burning boiler. He's got 36 solar panels, and he has these two solar thermal panels up on the roof. These make hot water for the hot water that comes out of the, the faucet. So that makes what that's called domestic hot water. So these make hot water for his domestic hot water. This is 96 solar panels. The manufacturer is Yingli, which is some Chinese company. And the system is rated at approximately 22 kilowatts. This is on a vineyard in Percival. And the couple of interesting things about this, one, it's huge. Two, the solar panels are actually the roof. They're not on the roof, they are the roof. So they are sealed. What you see is these lines between them. Those are all weather tight, sealed, so that whatever weather happens, it just rolls off the solar panels. And this system was also installed with micro inverters, one inverter for every panel. And when they initially did the installation, they, like most installations, they put the inverter underneath the panel. Then a light bulb went on under their head that, oh my God, that's our roof. So if one of those inverters goes, we're gonna have to disassemble the roof to get at the inverter. So they went back and they rewired it. So now the, the inverters are under the eave so as you look here, so here's the eave. Those inverters are all now installed underneath here. So they're open to the air underneath the eave of the building. Now at this uh, vineyard, again, this is data that they get from the Enphase website that shows another way of slicing how much energy they're generating. This, you can, might not be able to read it because it's kind of fuzzy, but uh, this is the power they generated on September 30th, October 1st, October 2nd, I guess it was rainy, 3rd, 4th, this is October 5th, they had a nice sunny day, and we went there on October 6th, so that's the power they had generated up to the point we were there, which was in the afternoon. Pretty neat that you can, you can slice the statistics from your system all different ways. Uh, this is yet another place. Now these are from, by the way, what this past weekend was the solar home tour. So we, of course, being complete solar crazy nuts, had to do the solar home tour. So this is another one. Uh, this is a woman's home in Percival, and she's got 45. So we first went to the guy's home with 36, then the woman with 45, and then we went to the, the um, vineyard with 96. So we made us feel pretty insignificant with our 18. It's like, oh, you know, who cares about 18? She's got 45, and these, in fact, you can change the pitch on these. Now, it's, you have to do it mechanically. There is an arm, and you'd have to raise and put the arm in it, but it can be done. 
Anyway, this same, this, her system does not use microinverters. She has a dedicated, a large dedicated inverter that does the whole house. Actually, her system is so big that she had to get two big inverters to be able to deal with her 45 panels. That's a lot of panels. So these are two big inverters. She does not use the microinverters, the one per panel microinverters. And she has battery backup. There's four batteries in this case. Each of these big batteries is about the size of three car batteries. So this is probably the equivalent of a, uh, a 12 car batteries in storage capability. So again, we're still at this woman's house. She also has solar thermal collectors. There's her big panels in back. She has solar thermal connector collectors. And again, these run water through it. Her water goes into a tank in her, her basement. We'll show you that in just a moment. And she uses it to make her domestic hot water, to hot water at the sink, and to take showers with. And if there's excess, she uses it to warm her pool. And she said she can use her pool into November. Um, and, and that's all from those two panels. So not only does she get all the hot water she needs at her tap, but she keeps her pool warm for an extra couple of months of swimming. <laughs> this, is her, this is her water storage tank. This is the chest that has the batteries. This is the battery charger slash inverter that works for the batteries. She has put a lot of coin into this system, major bucks. This part of it is not that expensive. This is the solar thermal hot water. Mm -hmm. But this collects the water from the solar thermal panels. And then there's coils running in. I think these are the, uh, uh, this brings the water from the collectors outside, the hot water from the collectors. And then on top, there's pipes that actually have the hot water that goes to the house. So now these batteries get charged by the solar panels. And then when power goes out, they feed this inverter. This inverter then feeds her kitchen and also provides power over to the other inverters, which say, OK, we can wake up and make power from the sun. And, and then they turn on those inverters, which, power, which uh, charge the batteries and keep the batteries topped up. So as long as it's sunny, she has power and she can use pretty much whatever she wants. Lots of people are interested. Of course, lots of people live in condos and townhomes. And we went to, uh, this past weekend, a townhome where the, the owner was able to convince his association to allow him to install solar panels on the roof. And, and like you folks, there's some people who think it's, oh, you know, I don't want to look out my window and see that. And then there's other people like, I only want to look out my window and see that. I've been talking about saving power. Now, this is a device. This is called a kilowatt. It says kilowatt. And so now I'm going to give you a bunch of readings from what things around our home, how much power they use. This will tell you how much power your stuff uses. And these cost, I don't know, 25, 30 bucks. I think I got mine from Amazon. And so it's called a kilowatt. <clears throat> and you can see it. This is the very one pictured there. And it's got various buttons on it. And we found that when we took our electric bill and divided that by the number of kilowatt hours, that we were paying for power at the rate of 12.6 cents per kilowatt hour. Kilowatt hours is what you pay for. Kilowatt hours is money. You pay for kilowatt hours. So we're paying 12.6 cents per kilowatt hour. We have a cordless vacuum cleaner. I don't know, these are really cool. They, I mean, it's not the world's best vacuum cleaner, but it's like amazingly uh, convenient. Uh, so it actually has like this dust buster thing built into it. And you kind of snap it in and you can use it as a floor sweeper vacuum. Or you can just pop out the dust buster thing and use the dust buster thing like you would use a dust buster. And so it draws, well, you can see what it draws there. So even if it's, if it's plugged, even though it's plugged in, mm -hmm. like in a charging mode, but it doesn't need any more charge, right. it's still using. Yep. yep. Those kinds of things, the things that are sapping your power that you don't know about, those are called vampires. And they're just, they're sipping a little bit of your power. The worst one, do you have a DVR for your cable TV or for your Verizon Fios? You know, a box that lets you record your cable channels? Oh, man. 
Those guys are drawing 30 to 40 watts all the time, even when they're turned off. That's a lot of juice all the time. Uh, this is my computer monitor. That's the desk I sit at and do my computer work and waste time watching videos on YouTube. And it's a 22-inch LCD monitor. It draws 26 watts. So every 10 hours of use costs about 3 cents. The desktop computer that that monitor is connected to, when it's off, when you turn it off, it's still drawing power, 1.5 watts, when it's turned off. The only way to keep it from drawing power is to unplug it. Or you get a uh, power strip, which I've got one down there. The power strip has an on-off switch on it. You can plug things into a power strip and then turn off the power strip. Do you unplug or do you just let it keep going? I don't unplug. I'm bad. <laughs> uh, when you put it to sleep, it's drawing 3.1 watts. When it's on but idle, like I'm not touching my computer now, when, it, when that computer is on but idle, it's drawing 84 watts. And when I'm doing some heavy number crunching thing, like I would edit videos on it, when I edit videos on it and I hear, it, I hear the fan come on and I know it's working hard, it's doing 135 watts. This, I think, is a fascinating thing that I hadn't really thought much about until I started making measurements with the kilowatt. Now when I walk away from the computer and I know I'm going to be gone for more than a few minutes, like when I go to have lunch or go to eat, I'll put it to sleep. I used to just let it be on. But there's a big savings here if you just put it to sleep. Hair dryer. So this hair dryer has got like 42 different possible settings. So we, we uh, filtered that all down to low, medium, and high. So if you've got a family full of teenagers who, you know, think the blow dryer is, is something they have to use for 15, 20 minutes a pop. So the hourly cost with the high setting would be 17 cents an hour. Uh, bedroom clock, 1.7 watts, costs a little bit less than two bucks a year because that's on all the time. Our electric toothbrush, we all want to smile. It costs uh, a bit less than a dollar to operate a year. You could probably buy a cheap toothbrush for a dollar. I don't know. But that's what, because uh, that's plugged in all the time. And it doesn't seem to matter whether it's charging or whether it's charged. It's drawing, seems to be drawing the same amount of power. We made a point of checking. Our internet router draws 13 watts all the time. The microwave oven, of course, it has a clock in it. Just with only the clock going, it's 5.6 watts. Now, we had been using it as a nightlight. This is an over-the-range yeah. microwave oven, so it's got lights underneath. And it's got a couple settings for the lights, a bright setting and a dim setting. And the bright one is good for when you're cooking. It shines lots of light down on the, the stove. But the dim setting, well, we've been using it for a nightlight. Holy cow, it's a 43-watt nightlight. When we realized that, it's like, nope, sorry, we're going to. So we got a, a more traditional nightlight and plugged it in right next to this. It's plugged into an outlet right over here. And it's as bright, and it uses 4 watts instead of 43 watts. And you see what the fan does. Of course, it has a light bulb. You open the door, the light comes on. It's 40 watts. And when it's cooking, we actually put a bowl of water in there. When it's heating up that water, it's drawing 1,615 watts. So microwave ovens are, are great. They draw a lot of power, but they do things quickly. So you, that's the balance with a microwave oven. It uses a lot of power, but it does its job quick. A laser printer, just when it's turned on, but you're not using it, just turned on, it's drawing 6.5 watts. And when you do a heavy printing job, it's drawing 850 watts. We have a dehumidifier down in our basement. Here's another thing. When it's plugged in, but it's not running, it's drawing 1.1 watts. So even if we didn't turn it on, it would be a buck 20 a year just to have it plugged in, just for the pleasure of plugging it in. I have no idea why that it needs that power, but it does. When it's running, it actually draws less power than I would have thought. I would have thought it'd be five or 600 watts, but still. The one we have, this is a Gold Star 
Don't get it. It's so noisy. Oh. It is deafening. You know, you remember like you watched a movie with those squadrons of World War II bombers flying overhead? That's what it sounds like. Uh, and our LCD TV. To me, this was a shocker. We have an older LCD TV. It was actually built in 2006. I think we got it January 2007. And uh, it was the first one that came out that was affordable, that had the features I want. It was a 1080p, et cetera, et cetera, yada, yada. Uh, and so we got it. I had no idea. Wow, that's a lot of juice. New ones, which are Energy Star rated, are about a third of that power, are about 110, 120 watts for a new 47 inch LCD TV. So every hour of TV watching, and we, you know, we have it on like anybody does. We watch a movie now, we watch the news, we watch Good Morning America. So every hour, about <coughs> four cents. We got an LED nightlight, and this could not, this could not read the power that the LED nightlight used. So it was less, this reads down to a tenth of a watt. So it's something less than a tenth of a watt. Uh, we have a carbon monoxide detector. It costs about $1.66 a year to run. Speaking of the phone, our cell phone, when it's charging the phone, and you see this little amber light on it, when it's charging the light's amber, when it's charged, the light is green. So when the light goes green, it goes down to zero watts. When it's charging, it's 2.2 watts. So even, I, I've heard over and over again that don't leave your charger plugged in because you're using electricity, but this could not measure the amount of electricity the charger was using when it was not plugged into a cell phone. Robert, you've set an all-time record, one hour and 20 minutes, and I know Sorry. you're not done, but they <laughs> tell me it. there's another meeting going to be taking place in the near future and they have to reset. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you.